Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I am going to create a scrapbook layout for you today with this very fun and springy Daisy Daisy collection from Close to My Heart. I just, don't these greens just scream spring? At least they do to me. I already created a layout with this paper pack so I do have some scraps. These were all originally 12 by 12 but you get two of each pa pattern paper so that's always nice. And then this is a scrap as well. I've got the stripe on the opposite side there and I still have quite a bit of the sticker sheet so there's the sticker sheet and then of course this gorgeous daisy die which I used on my last uh, layout where you can layer the thin cuts together to create this very textured floral embellishment it's absolutely gorgeous I have three photos these were taken many many years ago and this is myself and my horse and my youngest son Clayton we are going out for a ride it was my birthday and I, I was born on St. Patrick's Day so I must have been feeling very festive and I'm wearing this green shirt and I thought you know what that is perfect it matches the papers perfectly and then you probably can't see it but there's a very tiny daisy well it's not a daisy it's a dandelion it's a, a yellow dandelion tucked behind my ear Clayton used to pick one for me every time we'd go outside he'd find me the biggest dandelion he could and of course I'd put it behind my ear so I do want to document that memory with these photos as well so let me go ahead and clear this up out of the way and we will get started on this layout again it is a single page layout so I'll just bring in one verse mat now anytime I have kind of horse or western or mountain photos I love to bring in wood grain and truth be told I have an entire pack of wood grain paper but none nothing was quite the right color to go along with the Daisy Daisy collection. I am going to share a tip with you to create your own wood grain paper I just learned from fellow maker Tanya Robert. She shared a little demo over on her YouTube video and I'm going to uh, show you how to do that here today but I do want to just give a shout out to Tanya because it was awesome and I will leave her video listed in the description box below. Definitely check it out because she shares a lot of beautiful handmade cards with her wood grain paper and those are worth seeing also. So very cool. She used a scoreboard. I honestly don't have a scoreboard because I have a very small craft room. I keep kind of debating on getting one but you can use your paper trimmer and a an embossing stylus. This is a Cricut embossing stylus and and you're going to score lines at random intervals. So some of them will be about an inch apart, some of them are going to be three quarters, and then some up to two inches. So wherever you think there might be kind of like a wood grain slat, so to speak. So we're just embossing those lines. Let's see, let's make this one at one and three quarters. And you don't want to push too hard because you can actually tear the paper. So that was two inch, no, that was one and three quarters. Uh, we want to be very random. So let's go with one and a quarter here. You can make some the same, that's fine. It's no rhyme or reason. And this is just great because you can make wood grain paper any color you want. It doesn't have to just be on white. You could use a gray background or even a colored cardstock. So definitely check out Tanya's video because as I mentioned, she has some great ideas and she has done that and created different colors with her wood grain papers. So we are almost all the way across here. Just do a little bit more. This is, I don't know if I mentioned it, this is a sheet of white daisy. So I am using white daisy and then I'm going to use mink ink to create my wood grain. So now you wanna flip this over so that our raised embossed side is facing up. This is a great time to bring in your all-purpose mat. The all-purpose mat has a wipeable surface, nothing sticks to it. So you could get paint on this, anything, and it's going to wipe right up. And you know, it's great because it protects your desk. The back side is a grippy silicone surface, so it stays put. So I've got that down. Let me grab my paper here. And then again, I am using mink. I want a very light tone because the Daisy Daisy has some bold, vivid patterns. This is going to be my background. So I, I want it to be subtle and work with the design and not draw too much attention. So that's why I chose this one. So you are literally going to just go like this. I'm pressing lightly 
and where we have embossed and raised the paper, it is catching that ink and making it look like wood grains. So you can do as much or as little as you want and it is just so easy, you guys. I've made wood grain paper before, but the technique I had learned a long time ago involved masking and there was a lot more steps. This is so simple and look how good that looks. It's just awesome. Super fun tip there. So let me clean this up and then I'll bring my Versamat back in. So like I said, this is going to be my background and I picked out several pattern papers. I'm envisioning this one here. I like the smaller florals and I was kind of thinking of doing like a center layout so I could trim this one down. Although I don't want this to be my background. So I'll use this and then just bring in a couple strips on top here. But what I'm thinking is just bringing in my photos like this and then you could either have them in a grid or kind of like one block here or offset them, which I generally like to do because that creates nooks and crannies for titles and embellishments and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna go like that. I'm gonna trim down my paper, I'll be right back. I cut two strips at an inch and a quarter by 12. So those are going to sit on the outside edges of the layout. And that darker color is going to kind of naturally draw your eye to the center. This one I printed with a white mat and then I did ink up the edges with black ink. And then these guys, I actually sanded the edge of the photo to reveal the white. Can you see the tiny little bit of white? That was sanded with a nail file and then I matted it on the tiniest little bit of black because black does look really good with this um, Daisy Daisy collection so that you know I wanted to bring in some black with the photo mats. Then I cut just a few strips of this stripe pattern paper. The stripe is really fun because it allows you to bring in all of the colors in the paper pack. So sometimes just a little accent of this goes a long way. And that's going to finish off the transition between the papers very nicely. I want to mat my main focal photo here. So I was thinking maybe this paper. And then we have the other side with the smaller daisies. That might be better for a photo mat because the smaller pattern, you see more of the flowers peeking out from behind the photo. And then of course there's this gingham, which is a nice option. You know what, I like this one the best. I do. So I'm gonna cut a photo mat out of the daisy, smaller daisy paper. I did cut the photo mat larger than I typically do because again, I want that Daisy Daisy paper to show. And I did ink it up in black as well around the edges. I thought it'd be fun to mat these two on a different pattern paper. So let's try this gingham. And I do like it, but maybe a little bit too much green. I also have this piece, the opposite side of the stripe. And I think this might work. So let me kind of layer it right under here. And then we can mat our photos. I do like that. So let me see, I'm going to cut this right about there. I'm leaving myself extra room so I can dovetail the bottom. Just cut up from the center and then each corner. I find the wider your piece of paper, the trickier it is to get this to look even. But even if it's not perfect, ink up the edges and it'll camouflage any kind of wonky imperfections. So I'm just gonna add black for consistency because I'm doing this to all of my pieces. And again, this is a very subtle pattern, so that is going to help it, um, be, you know, just define it from the wood grain background. I decided to leave the bottom of this portion a little bit longer. For one, the banner dovetail is so fun and it's gonna balance out the title. I have Happy Life from the coordinating sticker sheet and I think that it will look nice kind of layered right under the photo in this section here. And now we can do the fun embellishing part. So I'm bringing in my verse mat. I'm using the opposite side. The back has this foam cushion. Let me grab my stamps. This is the coordinating Daisy Daisy stamp and I'm going to use the smallest Daisy and Flamingo ink and then I've got some white paper. Go ahead and season that by rubbing it on your hand a few times. And then I'm going to stamp out several flowers. Let's do some second generation as well, just in case. I like to do things in odd numbers. I don't know how many I'll need, but if I have some extras, I can always tuck them back into the stamp envelope to use on the next project. I will go ahead and cut these out off camera. They do not come with a coordinating die. 
But what's fun about this is there's this little tiny center so you can change the ink color and fill in your daisy centers. I'm gonna do first and second generation in black to coordinate with my layout. I love to use my stamp collection to customize my layouts and my ephemera. I have this one, it's called It's a Cowgirl Thing, and it's so cute. It is retired, I'm sorry, but I will put the information in the description box below in case anyone wants to try and locate that stamp if you're a horse person like I am. I've got the horseshoe and the cowboy hat, and I'll stamp those in black ink, and we can use those to embellish also. So I'm going to create a visual triangle. My first point of or embellishment cluster will be over here by my title. And I'm gonna kind of tuck those on the corner, a little bit underneath, and then maybe the horseshoe over here to bring in some of that black. I like the idea of the cowboy hat kind of hanging off the corner of the photo. And then I like to repeat elements. So I, of course, I'm gonna bring in some of the floral images to this area. And then to finish off that triangle, I'm going to draw your eye across the layout by placing the flowers down in the lower right corner. From the sticker sheet, this one here says, today was the best. And I want to bring a little of the green into this area. And I like the circular element. This sticker says, memories to keep. But I feel like we need some more black. So I grabbed this sticker, which says, enjoying today, to again, draw in that black color to this embellishment cluster. And I still wanna use the other sticker as well. So I'm just going to offset it and layer it kind of maybe over the flower here. I'm going to ink up the pink word sticker here just because it is so light and we want that to have a little bit more presence on the page. Above these two photos is a perfect spot for journaling. So I did go ahead and type that out onto ballerina cardstock. And then these are the fancy brackets dies. They are two of them and they nest. I'm gonna use the larger one to die cut out my journaling here and that adds a little bit of character and it makes the journaling more part of the design with that faux stitching detail and of course the unique edge rather than just cutting a square it's just kind of a fun way to dress it up. You could also stamp or draw some journaling lines and then handwrite your story in that area or maybe journaling strips. Lots of different ways to add it. It'd look good on vellum too to let that wood grain paper show through, but I thought that the ballerina pink was nice. Now these are paperboard die cuts from the It's the Little Things special, and I love these die cuts. There's daisies and butterflies, but I thought that this would be a great way to add just a little bit more black, and the butterflies go so nicely with the daisies. On the stamp set, there is a tiny little like leaf cluster here. I want to add a little bit of that to the background coming out from behind the daisies. So I'll just kind of hold it up where I want it and then move the flowers and stamp it down to the background. And then you can bring that back in. And then we'll do another one up top here on this flower. So again, just kind of line it up. Having the acrylic blocks makes this so easy. Stamp it down and then bring your little goodies back into place. Now, you don't have to repeat the exact same thing in every single embellishment cluster, but I do want one down here. There's too many layers of paper. So to kind of get around that, I'm going to stamp them on white daisy and then cut them out. And then I can tuck them in and that way they will go, cause it's very hard to stamp over multiple layers of paper. It's just, this is much easier. I do wanna add a tiny bit of green to this lower corner as well. And I love the gingham paper. So I'm thinking I want to cut a heart. I grabbed a die from my stash and then I'm just gonna cut a tiny little heart to layer into this area. So maybe I could tuck it here. I want a little more separation from the green border. So let's move the flower to the outside edge and the heart underneath the journaling or the word stickers there. I'm having so much fun stamping. There is this tiny little floral cluster here. There's three flowers. So I'm gonna add those to each of the embellishment clusters as well. These photos were taken March 17th of 2014, so almost nine years ago. And it's a little bit, looking at these photos makes me a little emotional, kind of sentimental. My horse Lola, I still have her, but she's getting to the point where, you know, my husband's like maybe another year and you might need to start looking for a replacement for her. And it just breaks my heart because 
I wish she could live forever and I didn't have to retire her. She No horse is bomb-proof, but she's darn close. And it is going to be very, very hard to find a horse to fill her shoes. And I'm not looking forward to it. With that, I'm going to call this layout done. Let me hold it up for you and get that into focus. You can see the fun stamped details there. And if you enjoyed this layout and found some helpful tips, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That helps me out quite a bit here on YouTube. So thank you so much for doing that. Head on over to any of my social media accounts, Instagram, Pinterest, or Facebook to see still shots of this video. And if you haven't seen the first layout I created with Daisy Daisy, you can catch that right here. Don't forget to check out Tanya's video and all these supplies can be found in the description box below. Thanks for watching.